Capricorn, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for July 2018 and Capricorn, every month I have one sign that is just very straightforward for me and it has never been you, like not yet. And so this is a real trip that I just kind of have some straightforward intel for you about the month coming up. Now, first and foremost, we've got all kinds of retrogrades happening this month. Mars is already retrograde and stays retrograde coming through the entire month, which is our planet of action, libido, passion, fire, our get up and go energy. Okay. Then Mercury, our planet of communication, decision making, thinking, details, that's going to go retrograde as well. Chiron is going to take a retrograde and right now we've been fighting for our identities with Chiron here in Aries. So he's going to flip around and we're going to have to recognize some limiting beliefs or limiting patterns that we have so we can get out of the way of those. Jupiter is going to come out of retrograde. So let's celebrate somebody coming out of retrograde. <laughs> And then we have two eclipses that are going to be happening this month as well. So lots going on. But for you, there is just this business of old beliefs of who you're supposed to be and what makes you responsible and what makes Capricorn Capricorn. And then this Pluto energy that's also in your sign. And then this energy of Pluto, which is also in your sign that says Capricorn. You have got to pull a phoenix move over this next month. Some piece of you has to die off so that another piece can live, especially in relationships. The universe is handing you the chance to have depth and quality relationships. But if you can't get out of your own way, if you're stuck in some limiting belief about what relationships, including business relationships, looks like, then you're gonna have a really hard time accessing this energy and doing something really positive with it. So let's just jump right in here, okay? I wanna start from the beginning of the month, get you into the details, get you out enjoying and living the month, all right? Right here at the beginning of the month on the 5th, we've got Chiron taking that retrograde in the sign of Aries, and this is happening in your fourth house. So this tells me that, first of all, you're fighting for a new identity in your home zone, right? Whether it be you've joined forces with somebody, um, you've recently moved, whatever it is, whatever is in your home zone, you are fighting for a new identity. How does this go? How does this work? How do I show up? Which also tells me that in your core level foundational beliefs, you're getting a reset because you're trying to find your own feet right here. Now with this Chiron energy going retrograde, you're gonna come into contact with some beliefs, some doubts, some fears, something that's really uncomfortable, but it's limiting. It's limiting in your thought process. Maybe you had an experience in the past. Maybe it's just never worked out. Maybe you've never had the great landlord. Maybe you've never had the right partner, whatever it is. And you're going to find yourself in the space of doubt and limiting beliefs. And you have to see that you have to clean out the yucky of the wound so that you are able to move it forward. So use this time. What is your purpose? What are you doing here? What's the limiting belief? These are the keys to that new identity, which will set a structure safe and solid for you to move forward on. Now on the ninth, Venus moves into Virgo, which Venus is uncomfortable in Virgo because Virgo is very nitpicky, okay? But Venus herself loves to be harmonizing diplomatic, sensual, beautiful, loves to attract money, pleasure, all of these kinds of things. And she's going to be walking around up here in your ninth house. So this is, makes you a very um, attractive for advertising, broadcasting, publishing, um, teaching, selling, things international, um, certifications, licenses, higher mind, education, any of these things, philosophy, faith, this is a wonderful faith placement and you're just people, places, things, money are attracted to you here. So let's say you own a business or something because you are a Capricorn or you've got something going on at business. Maybe this is the best marketing scheme you've ever come up with or it's just really pulling energy in. So it's a beautiful energy to work with. On top of that, Jupiter is coming direct in the sign of Scorpio, lighting up the 11th house space for you. So this is groups, right? When Jupiter is retrograde, he's still our biggest benefic planet. So he's still giving you benefit. But but it just kind of feels like it's coming in trickles and spurts. Now he's coming direct and he's gonna make it rain. Okay, so you have these social groups. Maybe people are getting their eyes on your content, on something that you're doing or you're trying to create or you're trying to teach, right? This could also be a place for you. I think with this shift of identity with the with the um, 
long range goals, fourth, fourth house stuff that's happening at the beginning of the month, you could be resetting your long range goals here, right? If your foundation, your housing, your home, your security are changing, of course, the vision of what you want moving forward is going to change as well. So this is a great time, I think, where you have the support of the cosmos to really help you do that. Now on the 12th, we've got a new moon partial solar eclipse at 20 degrees of Cancer, and this is giving light to your seventh house. So first of all, I wanna say, this is our new moon for the month. So we plant those seeds of intention, right? What do you want here? What is the experience you wanna have? What are you trying to create? And then we watch it bloom out over the next six months instead of four months because this is a solar eclipse. Now, we plant these seeds in the dark right? We don't know. We plant something and we have to wait to see how it's going to come up for us. And the universe gets to be wonderfully surprising to us in that way. But I will tell you that I think that there may be um, a little bit of conflict. This is actually showing me where in order to have new relationships, you're met with a little bit of conflict because Pluto is actually in opposition to this solar eclipse for you. And Pluto energy for you, you're an authoritarian energy, right? Pluto is a very authoritarian energy as well. It's our smallest planet, but man, he sure likes to be in charge, power struggles, left and right. So for me, Capricorns, with you guys, the straightforward deal is that in finding this new identity and letting this new life unfold for you, even if it looks way different than you thought it was going to look, you're going to have to not have a crisis all month long that you're going to have to have and move into some surrender, right? You're trying to maybe join a new unit or a new flow or a new something. And if you're fighting, 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 if it all has to be your way, if it is something where you just mentally can not obsess about the fact that maybe it doesn't look like your plan, you're really going to miss out. You're, this is going to be a very hard solar energy. But I think if you will understand that you're peeling layer by layer you're pulling that phoenix move something about you has to die off so that something else can live a new relationship can live and even if this is a business relationship you guys right some piece of you has to realize that this is a partnership energy it's not just that person's way it's not just sure where this has to be a partnership energy so the way that you've interacted in partnerships as a whole really has great potential this month but something has to die off you got to pull that phoenix move now i further dig into the depth of that being very straightforward for you because the sun is going to go into leo on the 22nd on the 26th mercury is going to take a retrograde in leo so first of all with a mercury retrograde we don't want to be signing contracts or doing anything like that because the details are not clear during a mercury retrograde communication devices information there can be lots of miscommunication misunderstanding and things like that but being here in the eighth house i think it's making you reevaluate intimacy how you actually share space energy life connection and resources with another human being or another entity because if this is business you know how are you showing up with your bank right how are you showing up in your taxes um, but if it's a relationship what's the intimacy are you afraid to let this person really in on what you've got going on i mean you're trying to surrender soften soften this month capricorn it is the responsible practical thing to do is to not fight the current okay now at the end of this month on the 27th we got a full moon total lunar eclipse happening in aquarius now mars is also retrograde here for you and this is in the second house okay so capricorns i do think look i just told you surrender 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 and i'm about to tell you the full moon says something has to be ended acknowledged or adjusted mars has slowed down the action it's really like a stall so you may have to pay attention to your money right? You may have to pay attention to what you're doing with your money. Maybe it's time for a new budget. Maybe it's time for an adjustment. But hey, if you're joining into a partnership with somebody, maybe you guys have to figure out how to do money together. If it's a business, maybe you guys are having to figure out how to get these books together. Um, another thing that I keep thinking of um, with this second house energy is that I feel like because you've been fighting so hard to have 
a different world. Your self-esteem is really, really different. And it can feel frustrating, I think, at the end of this month. It doesn't feel like, seem like, look like what you thought it was going to. You have these doubts, all of these other things. But I promise you, if you try not to make any super impulsive moves, if you honestly speak your mind about what's going on in a way that's not damaging to another person, but can affect change. Remember, Mars is still a warring energy. Is there something from the past that you need to be bringing to the table because it actually creates a pathway to freedom going forward, right? So think about those things. Now, here's the last thing that I will tell you about Aquarian energy, especially when it comes to Capricorns. Because Aquarius is such an electric energy and such a movable energy, I always worry about anxiety for you guys. It can be a very big concern. So if you're having a problem sleeping, you feel like you can't shut your mind off, something like that, you may want to look for some alternative tactics to taking care of that or you want to lean into where Jupiter is bringing a lot of those social groups to the table for you so that you can speak it out get it out of your head so that you can allow your body and the anxiety to subside and kind of have some relaxation this month you are doing a lot of surrendering a, a surrendering you're doing a lot of major changing this month and it's really about joining you with some other force um, and moving forward. So I think it's very straightforward. It's a month of surrender, reconsider. You're going to just breathe and move your feet. <laughs> That's how it's going to be. It's probably not going to look like the plan, but just breathe and move your feet, Capricorn, okay? I love you guys so, so, so much. I hope you have a beautiful month. Please keep me posted on what's happening, what's changing. Where are you merging with other energies or entities to create something new? Keep me posted in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you throughout the month. Bye.